questions or like to share what you've been experiencing or what you're seeing or not seeing or... Michelle um, I actually watched um, for the last two days in my lunch break I was watching the one-on-one -on -one you did with Donna actually the bubble exercise oh, the pajama yeah. tape the, what do you mean, pajama tape? Are you in pajamas? I was in my pajamas. <laughs> I, never, I never expected to publish it, but it was the only one I saw with that in it. That's so, so funny. Oh, I'm glad you didn't notice. Now I shouldn't I have didn't said it. No, but I will go back because it's like <laughs> I really <laughs> look at it again because I, I just really, um, yeah, enjoyed it. I, I find it because I think that I'm just. I'm still like from our other our previous conversation, Terry, back in November or whatever, just still spinning on the um, it's me who's aware, yeah. me that's conscious. And I've just found and I started, I felt like when I wasn't at work, I could get more space and that, but I went back to work last week. And so I sort of made a commitment to myself that in my lunch breaks that I'm going to do some like mm. YouTube and stuff mm. and just to kind of, yeah keep i mean i know that's the seeker that's a well I, I, well well actually it's not right okay the, the seeker can't do shit yeah right of course the, yep. seeker's, not, the seeker's not even the seeker's not responsible for the seeking and the yeah. seeker's not responsible for any of the thinking yeah yeah <laughs> all that is just yeah. happening <laughs> yeah yeah so the bubble what happened with that I just, I think it, it, it did, it, it's been helpful in just getting that separation from, um, from that it's me that's aware. And yeah, that idea of um, that in the bubble is thoughts and the body and all the objects and that, and that you're back here. I think it's, yeah, it's been really good. I'm sort of letting that bubble away. <laughs> as such yeah <laughs> could, could could you feel feel into that concept yeah i could i think that's what was so valuable about it instead of being um an intellectual another intellectual um exercise of going yeah i understand this um yeah. it was just a yeah, just a, a sense of, um, a feeling that I could be looking down, but. Mm. It comes from the same elk, that um, bubble pointer. It comes from the same elk as um, uh, Douglas Harding on having no head. Yeah, <clears throat> I don't know that one. Mm. Check it out. <laughs> okay. Check it out. It's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who's Douglas Harding? Is he another teacher? Yeah, he's passed away. Um, but he put put a book out around about the mid eighties called um, "On Having No Head." <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, and it takes you through the direct experience of that, which is very similar to the bubble. Mm. Yeah. What head do you have in the bubble pointer? Where's the head? There is none because you're looking down the body within the bubble. Mm. So, yeah. Like you can kind of look down. Yeah. Here, and the, the best you can see is like a, a torso, arms and legs and your feet and, and then everything else out there mm. in the world. Yeah. Although you can sort of catch a glimpse of your face. Really? Tell me about that. That's yeah. interesting. Tell me, about the, tell me about the glimpse that you catch of face. 
I can like I can see my I can see my nose. So there's a little pink spot that you're calling my head and my face. Yeah. That's it? That's your head and that's your face? Mm, yeah, that's all. I mean, it's just, it's not a complete thing. Yeah. 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 In your direct experience, and it's always about your direct experience. Mm. In your direct experience, like we're looking down, yeah, what's here? What's there? Yeah, it is. It's the body minus the head. <laughs> okay. So what's doing the looking? I, I, I mean, I'm going to say awareness. I don't... No, oh, yeah. But, but put, I'm just put, put, saying put, the right put, thing. Put, Put the green apple on my desk but at the end yeah. of class, okay? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You suck. <laughs> so if I'm going to say what's doing the looking, um, I still feel that there's a me there looking. Okay. But yeah. So describe that. Describe the me that's looking in your direct experience. Well, it's kind of just a blank, actually. That's a bit better, isn't it? Yeah. That's a bit closer to the truth, isn't it? Yeah, because my first thought when you said that was my me is just a, a bunch of thoughts and then it went to sort of silence. So I was doing that putting another apple on your desk <laughs> um, thing. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Like, we're both sitting here, you and I, now, Michelle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see your head, you see my head. Mm. How many heads are there? From direct experience, only one. One? Yeah. Which one's not there? Mine. Right. But then if... In your experience, my head is here, then yeah, I must no, have a head. But there's no head. No. You're going to believe me. Don't believe me. Why not? Because it would be a belief, not a fact. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Okay. I mean, if you're going to believe that, then you might as well believe, um, oh, I don't know. Um, you're too short. You're obsessive. You're, you eat too much. You don't eat properly. Uh, mm -hmm. Your hair's not long enough. Don't like the colour of your hair. You might as well believe all that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, why would that one belief be true but all the others false? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, this comes back to your direct experience. And I know how crazy it sounds initially when you hear, oh, you don't have a head. <laughs> like, it just sounds absurd. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Never Never to be uttered outside of this living room. <laughs> <laughs> or outside of here, that's for outside sure. Outside of this screen. <laughs> yeah. We're always going for your direct experience. Always with this. Direct. Mm. Yeah. So... In your direct experience, what's here? What's there? 
behind. Hmm. Oh. In, in place of head. What's here? What's there? I don't know. When you look in the mirror, is that you? Well, that would be a belief. Is it, that would... well, well, okay. So when you look in the mirror and you see the image, yeah. what's, what's missing in the image? What can't you see in the image? Well, depending on how big the mirror is, I may not be able to see from the waist down. Let's, let's say it's a big mirror. Okay. Full body mirror. Yep. I can see the front of me. Right. What can't you see? The back of me. Good. What else? I don't what's know. Miss, what's what's missing in the reflection? What's what's missing? Uh, uh, well, it's it's not it's not it's like one dimensional, two dimensional, one dimensional. Um, it, it appears three, it appears three dimensional. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What doesn't get reflected back in the mirror? What? You're me? <laughs> I, I don't know. No, nah, take the apple off the desk. Oh. <laughs> what doesn't get reflected? Um, yeah. Whatever's not in the field of the mirror. And what's that? Everything else? No, 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 no. Okay, yep, no. Come on. Awareness? Hello. <laughs> Is the image conscious? No. No. Is the image aware? No. Is the image experiencing being? No. Then I hope to God you're not the image. I'm that that's witnessing the image. Ah, what's that? Awareness. Put the apple back on the desk. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like... like All right. What's awareness? <laughs> What's that? It's it's that that's a witness of everything else, objective world. Okay, and what is it to you? It's who I am. Yeah. Tell me about that. But I say that, but I don't feel that. Ah, yeah. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can so you, is, can, I, look, look, look. Imagine just for a moment, right, the image that you see in the mirror yeah. could experience being conscious, aware, and being. Imagine that for a moment. Now, which one are you? The one that's still witnessing it. Yeah, but the, I'm, I've just given consciousness, beingness and awareness to the image in the mirror. Are you saying the image of the mirror is the equivalent of my mind-body form experience within the bubble? Yes. That's exactly what I'm saying. Right. That's exactly what I'm saying. Hmm. Anything you can be aware of 
in particular, like, where's the point of awareness? Where's it located? Yeah. Can't locate it. All right. Is it in the image in the mirror? No. Good. Is it in the bubble? No. Good. Where is it? Well, it feels like from that exercise that it is outside of the bubble. All right. Yeah. <laughs> In your direct experience, Michelle, yeah. where is it? In your direct experience. Get out of your head. If, if I'm just like trying to, I, f I feel like it shifts back into my body and then it's coming out from there. Like. Right. I, into your body. Yeah. Whereabouts in your body? Well, just sort of like the whole thing. Your, your big toe. It's, it's not locatable. Your left ankle? What about your right knee? What about your butt? Your left arm, your right arm? Mm. Torso? Neck? You said in the body? Yeah. Where? In your, in your direct experience? Where? Yeah. See if that statement is true in the body. Yeah. Just you need to see if that statement is true. I mean, it feels like it's coming through the eyes. That place where there's no head. Oh. <gasps> Where's it coming from? Where is it being experienced? I don't know. My mind is starting to like feel trapped, like it's <laughs> needs to Good. have an answer. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's starting. My me's starting to get upset. <laughs> the answer's really simple. What? Here. <sighs> here and now. Just leave the now off. Here. Okay. Yeah. Here. Awareness is here. Where else would awareness be? <laughs> Where's consciousness? Here. <laughs> yeah. Right. So that there's there's such a desire to like find a geographical location um, of awareness, but it isn't. It's just here. That's all. Yeah. It's. Does it have to have a fixed point? No. No. I guess this is exactly what we're talking about or you're talking about and others do about the simplicity and the overlooking yeah. of it. Yeah. It's really simple. Yeah. I wish I could bottle this. Mm. It's so simple. Yeah. It's we missed it. It's because the mind is so complex. 
Yeah. Oh, it was it was trying to race around and just trying to, yeah. So in relation to the bubble, mm. consciousness is in the bubble or a better way to, as a result of consciousness, the bubble is, yeah. Mm. And back here, is awareness. And awareness is outside the bubble. Like, you know, something's going on. You just can't put it into words. Mm. You know, there's something. You, you know there's something happening. Mm. Yeah? You mean with relation to awareness or with in relation to stuff's happening in the bubble? No, 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 in relation to awareness. Yep, okay. We just don't look there. We're yep. too busy looking at everything in the bubble. Yeah, okay. Way too busy. Mm. Yeah believing we're a body and we've got a head and we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And clearly I've got a head because everyone else has got a head. <laughs> I must have a head. That's, it's such a radical idea. Yeah, no more radical than um, um, you've never had a relationship in your life. Mm. No more radical. No more radical than there's no such thing as time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. it feels but, like it is because mm. we. Yeah. No more radical than holy shit! You don't have free will. Mm. I don't know why those things are so, those three things are so much more easy to accept than I don't have a head. Mm. <laughs> 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 well even if you you look in the mirror yeah yeah you see a whole body and you see a head yeah you see a whole body there yeah, yeah. where are you in relation to that reflection in your direct experience in my direct experience i'm standing in front of the mirror yeah, where are you? You as in me or you as in I? You as in I. Oh, you as in I. The me bubbles up in the bubble. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not I'm not I'm not standing in front of the mirror. Ah. Yeah. Ah. Is awareness reflected back in the mirror? No. Then you're not standing in front of the mirror. Is awareness reflectable? Is no. consciousness reflectable? Is beingness reflectable no no but we take the image in the mirror to be me oh that's me yeah. <laughs> i'm this body there i am i can see myself in the mirror i'm even waving at myself in the mirror yeah that's clearly me are you conscious yes is that reflected in the mirror no no so what the hell's that? This is the bit we miss. What the hell's what? The thing in the mirror or? Consciousness. Con yeah, yeah. That that's not reflected back in the mirror. Yeah. What the hell's that?
We go, get so caught up in the content of the bubble, so caught up in that, we don't realize we don't even have a head. <laughs> I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's your direct experience. Yeah. We keep ignoring the fact that we are conscious and aware. Mm. We ignore it. It's unbelievable that we ignore that. Unbelievable. That gets ignored. Part of it's because it's not reflected back in the mirror. Mm. We only take things to be real that can be reflected back in the mirror. Mm. What, what about this? What, what's happening here? And we ignore it. Tell me, Michelle, what can you tell me about your direct experience of being conscious? What can you tell me about it? that I'm like living, breathing, like. That's conscious of, hold on. Mm. That's conscious of. Yeah. Conscious of living, conscious of breathing, conscious yeah. of seeing, conscious of the tree, conscious of my thoughts. Con that's conscious of. Yeah. Not interested in what you're conscious of. Mm. The questions to consciousness. What can you tell me? about your direct experience of being conscious. I, I, my mind's just freezing. I don't know how to... I don't know how to articulate it. I don't know if, even if I have anything to articulate. It feels ridiculous that I have nothing to say about that. Hmm. Is that normal? Yeah, when, when mind is speaking, yeah. Yeah. Because mind can't experience it. No. The mind just goes, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I can't articulate, I can't, yeah. Mind can't experience it. Yet it's being experienced. Yeah. Yeah. Ask me about my direct experience of being conscious. Terry, what's your direct experience of being conscious? It's unbelievable. <laughs> it's profound, beautiful, incredible. There's three words. See the difference? Mind goes, eh, I don't know. It does. It can't experience it. Mind can't experience it. Cannot. Cannot. And it's only mind that's the seeker. <laughs> and mind's going looking for something it can never experience. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. And yet, there you are, sitting there right now, Michelle, conscious. <laughs> what are you looking for? Oh, she disappeared. <laughs> Isn't that what you wanted? 
<laughs> Just enter, yes. Can't hear you. You need to unmute yourself. Oh, there's Michelle again. Oh, she's moved. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Sorry about that. That's all right. Um, my, my internet just dropped out. You were pretty much about to tell me the meaning of life, the answer to the meaning of life, and my internet just went. So I was punching madly at my keyboard going, no, I'm about to find the answer. So you were saying how your experience of consciousness was incredible and amazing. And note the difference. Tell me about your experience of consciousness. See, clearly I'm not experiencing it. Oh, clearly you are. <laughs> clearly, absolutely clearly you are. Why am I not feeling the... the because, you're taking, because you're taking yourself to be the Michelle character that the mind is producing, which is nothing but a pattern of thoughts, and the Michelle character can never experience consciousness. It's not possible. Yeah. It's not possible. The Michelle character is a pattern of thoughts. Mm. And that's being believed. Not by you that's conscious, but... Yeah, yeah. Well, that's not exactly true, actually. It's not exactly true, but... So back to square one, it's like, it's just. Oh, that, but that's great. Where's square one? Square one is I'm still not getting it. No, no, no. Square one's here. That's where you end up. Back to square one. Right. Here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's still just a believed in. Yep. Character. Yep. Yeah. And the true test is when you say to someone, tell me about your direct experience of being conscious. Yeah. And they kind of go, ah, but um, but um, and um, well, I don't know. I guess I'm just here. Mm. Like, is that it? Is that, that's not it. Mm. <laughs> mm. Without consciousness, everything contained in the bubble disappears. Mm. Everything. Now, you want to place more value on the personal Michelle than consciousness? The whole universe disappears. Yeah. Yeah. Without consciousness, disappears. You know, and yet we place more value on this personal little me that's out there trying to discover consciousness. <laughs> you already are that. Yeah. But if you believe you're the me character, then you're unconscious. Mm. Totally not conscious of being conscious. Just totally conscious of the me character and all the stuff that goes on in the mind. And we live in there. Mm. Like, literally, we live in there. It's like, it's a, it's, Jesus, it's a dream in there. Yeah. We live in there. What the hell are we doing living in there mm. when we're here? Can you be aware but unconscious? No. Well, I feel like I'm developing awareness, but I'm clearly unconscious. You can be, but there's no experience. Zero. Mm. It's like you revert back to full potential. Yet to happen. Mm. Yeah. 
Consciousness is the split from the absolute. Mm. Yeah. That's very conceptual too, by the way. Yeah. yeah. No actual split, but yeah. Without consciousness, there's nothing's going on. There's no space, there's no time, there's no objects, there's no things, there's no thoughts, there's no body, there's nothing without consciousness. Mm. Yeah. Consciousness arises and so does the universe. Kaboom. Mm. What's prior to the Big Bang? Awareness. Got to lay that on a physicist one day. (laughs) (laughs) Uncaused. Uncaused. Causation is just a product of the mind. Only. Why? Because the mind works dualistically. For an effect to happen, there's got to be a cause. <laughs> yeah. Where are you right now? Here. Good. What's that? See if you can be aware of the mind fishing around trying to come up with something. Yeah, it is. Good. Yep. Good. <laughs> do you need the do you need the mind to come up with something to know that you're here? Seriously. No, only if you, you need a verbal answer. Do you need a verbal answer? No. Why are you fishing in the mine then? That's you ask me a question, but, so I have to answer. It'll be rude. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to get you see, get you to see what happens. That's all. Yeah. Just yeah. what happens. What the mind does, and. You know you are, right? I am. Mm. Do you have to say that all day long to know you are? Mm. No. I am, I am, I am. The moment I stop saying I am, I'm going to disappear. So I've got to make sure that I just keep saying I am. I. You don't have to do that. Mm. That that we actually are gets overlooked. Because mind is not conscious and it is not aware. So it can't experience this. Mm. All experience as such happens as a result of you being conscious. Yeah. Can the reflection in the mirror taste a mango? No. No. Mm. But the the person person in the bubble can. There's no yeah, but you you're calling it a person. And I'm saying it's not a person. What is it if it's not a person? Oh, good question. Where's that question been hiding? (laughs) What is it if it's not a person? (laughs) So let's let's revert to the mango, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Do the taste buds need a person to taste the mango? No. Well, they they need to be connected to the tongue, which needs to be connected to 
What, a person? Senses and brains, a yeah. brain. Yeah. Where's the person? Do you need a person to taste the mango? Well, those things are usually contained within a person. Ah. <laughs> okay. So all the senses are contained within the person. The human form, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. And what's the person contained in? Space. Space. The person's contained in space. What do you mean by contained where they exist? Or well, what? you just said that the senses mm. are contained in the person. Yeah. Yeah? What's the person contained in? When I say person, I'm meaning body. Right, so the senses are contained within the body. The body. Yeah. Yep. Where's the person? The person is the person's. Is it like a, it's the me? It's like made up of thoughts. It's made up of I, ideas. Okay, so are the, the senses and the body contained in thoughts? No. Interesting. Where's the me? I'm very clear that the me is, is thoughts. <clears throat> No, you're not. <laughs> Intellectually, I'm very Intellectually, you, you, you aren't. Intellectually, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that can stop you from looking. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, I got that. I know, you know. Yeah, I got that. No. Yeah. <clears throat> you have to look. Don't accept it. Don't accept the mind in your direct experience. Mm. It's always your direct experience. I know people have a lot of difficulty with the, uh, the time concept. They do. Mm. Yeah. Of course there's time. Yeah. In your direct experience, tell me about your experience of time right now. In your direct experience, tell me about your experience of time now. No, 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 now. No. Michelle, now. Michelle, now. Right now, tell me about your experience of time now. You can't. Why not? Why not? Now. Michelle, now. Tell me about your experience of time now. No, no, now. <laughs> tell me about your experience of time now. Why is it so difficult for us to answer that? Now. Tell me about your experience of time now. Can we actually experience time? No. Well, that blows that out the water. <gasps> then it just becomes a concept, doesn't it? Yeah. An idea. Yeah. It's believed in. Yeah. We believe time exists, that there is a past and that there is a future. We believe that. Yeah. It's a belief. When you examine it yourself from your direct experience. Yeah. Now. I'm not saying that the concept of time is not a useful instrument or a useful concept. I'm not saying that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But in your direct experience, right here, right now, mm. in your direct experience, there's no time. No. Good. Now, the me is made up purely of the concept of time. So me is a concept. 
It's not a real thing. Mm. Yeah. The whole, whole idea of self or personal self is all based on memory. And we call memory the past. Please tell me you're more than just memory. Mm. Yeah. When we believe in the concept of time, yeah, we bring the past into the present, which is just all memory, right? All memory. Yeah. I've done this and I've done that and I've been here and done and this has happened to me and I've done blah, 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 right? All memory. We bring all of that into the present and call that me. Mm. Please tell me you're more than a memory. Mm. Please. Mm. And in your direct experience right here, when you analyse it, what's your direct experience of time? Now. There's nothing. Now. Now. That's your direct experience. That's a direct knowing. Yeah. Yeah. And you compare this to the concept of time. Mm. It's mind made. Yeah. Yeah. And the personal me is contained in that concept of time. That's why I use the amnesia pointer. Yeah. Yeah. If you could wipe, wipe out your, your history, mm. your memory, so there's no backstory. Where's Michelle go? Mm. You know, the personal Michelle I'm talking about mm. that mm. believes it's had a life, you know. Mm. Where's that go? Mm. It's gone. All we've done is erase memory of the personal self I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. You should be able to talk and see and add up and, and yeah. you know, still be able to communicate. Yeah. But your personal self would be gone. Completely mm. gone. What remains? What's not dependent <laughs> on memory? What? What's not dependent on that? I mean, the here and now? Consciousness. Yeah, yeah consciousness. Yeah, here and right now. Yeah. It's not dependent on it mm. at all. And we miss this. We miss it. Yeah. Too busy believing the mind and the concept, and oh. we've done it all our life. Mm. Yeah, it's you know, this is pretty radical. Mm. <laughs> Yet you come back to your own direct experience, and what's your actual direct experience? Mm. Holy shit! In my direct experience, I haven't a clue what time is. I'm how do I even experience time when it's just always now? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel really exhausted by. <laughs> I feel, I, oh, it's just, uh. Yeah, like throw in the towel, mate. I can't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it gets thrown in, Michelle, when you see the truth. Mm. The truth. The truth of what's actually happening. Where are you right now? Here. Good. Get to know that. Mm. Not with that. That's the hard thing. Had what? Why? It's a direct experience. You are here. You are conscious and aware. Right. 
It's alive. Yeah. As such. <laughs> this is where the actual experience ing is taking place. This is what the seeker is looking for. It's right here. Just taking yourself to be something else. You need to inquire into that. What am I taking myself to be? What's actually, what's really actually happening? Use logic. Mm. Hmm? It's a fact finding mission. Mm. I'm going to let you go to sleep now. <laughs> yeah, let let someone else have a go. <laughs> I've warmed every I've warmed a group up now. They should be able to. <laughs> Thanks, Terry. Pleasure. Terry. Yes, Malcolm. Can I just add a little something maybe useful which I've found? Please. With a direct experience. Yeah. Um it comes from my Zen teacher and something you said a while ago. If I take my attention to my hands, the direct experience is I'm not thinking about my hands. Mm. I'm not imagining my hands. There's just the feeling. Yeah. That's direct experience. Yeah. And I don't have fingernails and hairs in my experience. That's right. My direct experience. Good. I've got nails that I'm in, I'm in mind. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. The direct experience. Yeah. Same as the on having no head. In your direct experience, there's no head. In your direct experience. <clears throat> it sounds absurd to the mind to say that, but you've got to come back to your direct experience. Stop trusting what the mind is saying. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Michelle. Yeah, good questions, Michelle. Great questions. Yeah. Really, really good. Get an elephant stamp for that. <laughs> All right. Anyone not track with that? Okay. So now what? <laughs> Everyone tracked with that? Now what? How you doing, Lindy? You okay? Yes, I'm okay. I'm, I'm really tired actually this morning, so I'll need to watch that again. There's certainly some, um, yeah. Good. It yeah. often makes more sense the second time around. But I, I, I'm a bit confused about the whole bubble thing. So I've just, I sent um, Donna uh, a, an email. Yeah. So could she just uh, point me in the direction of wherever it is? So, um, I'll, I'll send a link to that um, video when I send out the recordings. We're just being joined now by, um, what are we being joined by? By Luindu, but the name's coming up as Lewis. So can you hear us, Luindu? Yes, I can hear everyone. Ah, good. Welcome to the meeting where um, you're, you're a little bit late. We've got half an hour to go. But that's all right. All oh, right. It came up as um, 8.30 for me. For some reason, the start. Right. 
So it's 7.30 for you. Where are you? Uh, we're in Melbourne. <laughs> yeah. That's where I am. So yeah. it's a 30 start. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's all right. We'll get the next one as well. No worries. It's been recorded, so you'll be able to watch it. Perfect. So do you prefer to be called Lewis? Um, either that doesn't matter. I don't mind. If you can go with Lewin, do go with it. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You see what I'm going with. <laughs> That's Sarah. How are you? Good. I like the yeah. beard today. <laughs> it's just laziness. <laughs> Looks nice. Thanks. Yeah, I just just come from work, so um, I haven't. I'm not prepared the way all these. Yeah. Everyone else is. Yeah, yeah. The mind would still be rework. Yeah. How are you otherwise? Yeah, good. Yeah? I've got a sort of silly question. Great. Love silly ones. It's a bit embarrassing. Nah, go. I watched a show on Netflix. <laughs> and it was about people who uh, had had near-death experiences. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, some people who had biologically been without oxygen for a significant period of time, and this was all recorded. And they, um, they, they had, you know, they, they realised, the doctors were saying that the, the, the mind and consciousness doesn't seem to be located in the brain because the brain was flatlining, but the perception was still there. Yeah. And... Um, some of the things that the people who had experienced the near-death experience <coughs> were speaking very, very similarly to some of the stuff that I hear you say and, um, you know, other, other people um, who speak the same way as you yeah. say. And I just thought it was really interesting. And I guess my question is, I'm not asking you to explain what happens after death obviously but it's just uh, it just it's just fascinating the the idea that the that consciousness really isn't located in our physical um uh, it's it's unlocatable good so if we take ourselves to be the body and the personal me, then death seems real. We've been conditioned to believe that. Yeah. And then I come along and others will come along yeah. and they'll say, there's no such thing as death. And the me and the body goes, uh, but I mean, I saw one of my parents die. Clearly there's such a thing as death. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> which is based on the belief that your parent is the body. Yeah. Consciousness doesn't die, nor is it born. Now, that all sounds well and good, yeah? But until you know it, you don't know it. So, yeah, that's right. So that makes sense to me. So when you think that you're um, seeing, in that example you used, the parent has died, then what you're... It's like the personality that is the me, which is the history of thoughts and memories and combination of thought patterns is missing the combination of thought patterns that was the identified father or mother. Yeah. 
And so it's like this thought pattern's missing that thought pattern and this thought pattern associated itself with this flesh and blood and body or physical thing and is missing that flesh, flesh and body physical thing that... <laughs> so it does feel like, well, that's an entity and that's an entity and that is missing that and that is no longer present because that is physically not there. So, what's good. What's not there? Um, the <laughs> yeah, okay. The per, I was going to say the person, but that's still the thought of the person. Yeah. So if the person's not in front of you, they don't exist anyway, whether they're alive or dead. <laughs> even the if even if the person is in front of you. They're not the person. What are they? Uh, what, what's the person? The person is my perception of that. Right. So the person is my thoughts. Does that sound reasonable to you? On a theoretical level, absolutely. And there's when I, when I, feel it it's like oh, of course <laughs> but you know i spend most of my life floating in this yeah so it's really hard to go oh. yeah but can, can you see the absurdity of um the person is there because i perceive them to be The person is there because I think the person is there. Like, <laughs> try that on with me. Yeah. There's no one here. That's interesting because... Um... I don't care what you think. I've you, might, you, might, you might think there's someone here, and I'm telling you, there's not. Now, what are you going to do? What are you going to do now? Well, I'm challenged with the creation that I've made in my head of who Terry is. Yeah. And am I that? Am I in your head? Yeah, you are often. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not my experience, so that's wrong. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> if you're talking about that experience of having no head, I'm right there with you. Right there with you? What do you mean? Then I'm right there with you. Mm. You came in a bit late when we were talking about um, Douglas Harding on having no head. Then we went into the bubble. We talked about that. Yeah. yeah. Which I've heard before. But, um... And I know you've heard me um, ask before. I see your head, you see my head. How many heads are there? Hmm. Yeah. Can't see yours. I can see my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> What's looking through the glasses? My eyes. Oh. Is it your eyes that are saying, oh, there, the, there, there's the glasses? M me. What's that? Thoughts. Ah, so the thoughts are looking through the eyes. Yeah. Really? Wow. Tell me about that. 
I didn't know a thought could experience that. Tell me about that. It thinks it can. <laughs> <laughs> but can it? Is a thought needed to, for seeing to happen? That's the perpetual frustration of thoughts is it can't do anything. Right. Well, it can't experience anything. Yeah. Experience anything. Yeah, there's an experience. There's an experiencing happening. So it's always that's, just, the, that's the paradox. That's why we get confused. I'm saying thoughts can't experience anything. Yet in your direct experience, there's an experiencing happening. It's just not the me or the thoughts that are experiencing something else that we overlook all the time. Oop. Sure what happened then. Let me just see if I can, uh, where are you? There you are. It's just so frustrating because I want to be there all the time. And the answer is, well, I am. <laughs> you said, let it go or put it down or something to Michelle before. Just the thing is just who wouldn't do it if they could? <laughs> yeah. It's just... What does it tell you? That if you can't do it, what does it tell you? That's the wrong way to go about it. It's not possible. Well, that's interesting. Give up. <laughs> Stop seeking. That's the wrong way to go about it. So maybe me needs to find another way of going about it. Did you hear what I just said? Mm. <laughs> that's just that's cyclic isn't it yeah yeah mm. oh. it's like trying to untie a knot that's been tied for millennia it's a really hard knot to untie. It's so yeah. complicated. And I know that's just another story, but. That's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look. You've got to inquire with truth. <laughs> Refuse a belief. Refuse an assumption. Refuse it. See that it's a belief, your own belief. Yeah, see that it's a belief or see that it's an assumption. Refuse that. Just refuse that. Yeah. Yeah. Refuse it. Mm -hmm. Now, what else? What else? Oh, refuse that. Oh, no, that's a belief too. Oh, belief, assumption, belief, assumption, belief, oh, concept. I have no investment in a belief. I have no investment in an assumption or a concept. Just have no investment in it. Why would you? It's a belief. When something becomes a fact, could we then call it a belief? Did you say that sentence again? If an assumption becomes a fact. No, no, no. Uh, something becomes a fact. Something becomes a fact. Would you then call that a belief? But how do you know it's a fact unless you believe it's a fact? 
<laughs> Around we go. <laughs> Internet connection dropped out while you were speaking then, so I might have missed it. Well, just all I said was, and around we go. Uh, yeah. Can you sit there right now and say, I am not, and it be a fact? No. So there's a fact. Okay. Do you have to believe that fact? No. Or is that a fact? Just is, yeah. 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 Mm. Even if you said I am not, that would be absurd because you'd have to be there to say it. Yeah. It's a fact. I am. That's a fact. What you are <clears throat> is a concept and a belief, misunderstanding, assumption, mind. What you take yourself to be, rather. There's no... no that's fact. There's, there's like, through this journey of, of speaking to you, there's no part of me that... Um, doesn't hear, understand, feel, get all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, and it goes back to the it's all there, but I'm still here. Ah. <laughs> Where did you expect to find yourself? Oh, that's quite a question. <laughs> Where did I expect to find myself? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I can hear what you're asking. I remember saying the same thing. But I'm still here. <laughs> Where'd you expect to find yourself? Here. And here you are. I don't want to find me anymore. <laughs> Say that again. I don't want to find me anymore. <clears throat> yeah, okay. Who's saying that? What's that? <laughs> well, look, I, I, I remember the exact same thing coming up for me. Yeah, which was, God, I know all this stuff. I know all this stuff. But the truth is, me still feels here. I didn't realise how profound that statement was. I thought it was a negative. Ah. I thought it was a negative. You are here. <laughs> So it just goes back to the simplicity of thoughts happen. You can't stop them. You just don't believe any of them. And they <laughs> go away. <laughs> well. And they reduce. Depends where you want to live. Do you want to live in the mind or do you want to live here? Where yeah. do you want to live? So simple. Yeah. Mind is just such a rabid habit. Yeah, yeah. Who cares? <laughs> uh, Who cares? Yeah. The point is, yes. you're here. This is what you've been looking for. You're here. And and here doesn't mean. Is that right? Just here. Uh, Just here. Yeah. Just here. Here only becomes a problem 
when we think it's me that's here. <laughs> and what we're trying to do is get rid of the me. I don't want me to be here. I just want to, I just want here to be here. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> well, here is here. <laughs> here is here. It's never not been here. Ever. What do you want? This is what you've been looking for. But I know that your experience of here is very different from this experience of here. Ah, that's just the only difference between your experience and my experience is you think there's a difference. It's the only difference. You think there's a difference. I'm telling you there's not. There's absolutely not not. So you must be sort of thinking a lot of rubbish and feeling stressed and <laughs> there's no difference. Are you conscious? Yes. So am I. Full stop. Yeah. Just full stop. What difference is there then? Watch the mind. The mind will go, oh, yeah, but there's a, you know, I'm not experiencing what you're experiencing. Bullshit. It's not true, what it's saying. If it gets believed, that's what the reality becomes. It does. Yeah. It's a very, you know, subjective, isolated little reality like the other 8 billion people are doing on the planet. Which one's real? Where's reality? What's real? Billion different perceptions and concepts and ideas. If we took that to be real, there'd be eight billion planets, planet Earths. How, how many Earths are there? How many moons are there? Eight billion? That that we're taking the moon to be or that that we're taking the, the, the world to be is not it. Why should, why, should, why should yours be right and mine not? Yet we absolutely believe ours is right. Yeah, I see the moon. I see the moon. I'm aware of the planet. And we take that to be true. Yeah. But I see the moon too. Now we've got two moons. Michelle sees the moon. Now we've got three. Yeah. Malcolm, Lindy, Donna, they see the moon as well. How many moons have we got now? Will the real moon please stand up? Two things going on, one's real, one's not. What's real?
What's not? Feelings aren't real. <laughs> They're not what the mind is saying they are. Can't deny the sensation. But what if the feeling is not at all what the mind is saying it is? That's radical. Yeah, that's really. Mm. You're tired. I'm going to let you off the hook now. Hard to think of feeling gloomy as actually happy. <laughs> It's hard to think think of happy actually being happy. A thought can't experience happy. A thought can't experience sad. A thought can't experience anxiety. A thought can't experience depression. A thought doesn't experience a climax. Thought doesn't experience water. Thought doesn't experience heat. And a thought doesn't experience consciousness. The thought itself would have to be conscious and aware to be able to experience consciousness and awareness. This that's aware of thoughts. It's, and it's a one way, it's one way. You're here conscious of thoughts. A thought's conscious of consciousness, that's conscious of thoughts. Really, it's one way. And the, the little trap there is the mind says, oh, I, me, am conscious of the mind. <laughs> it's not me that's conscious of the mind. Me is mind. You know, that mind that you're conscious of? Yeah. You're conscious of me? Right now? Conscious of you? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Do you take me to be you? No. Right. Why? Because you're over there. It's because you're conscious of me. Now, are you conscious of mind? Mm -hmm. It's that simple. How can you be mind? How can you be mind? You're conscious of it. Perfect sense. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> start being interested in this that's conscious of mind. This that's conscious of Terry. In your direct experience. Do don't, my... set, don't settle for what the mind says, because the mind's going to say, oh, it's me that's conscious of Terry. That's wrong. It's wrong. <laughs> 
Yeah. You're conscious of your personal self. You're conscious of it. And, the absent, and in the absence of all thoughts, amazing thing happens. Your personal self disappears. What a holiday. <laughs> then what then what would you what would you be conscious of? Just life. Oh, you might just be conscious. Where's my where's my timer? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's waiting quick. waiting for an opportune time to bust in. <laughs> Thanks for going over time, Terry. 